Well, thank you all for joining us. My name is Corey Williams and I work with the Fayetteville Public Library and I'm here in to introduce Marta Londigan with the executive, who's an executive consultant with Startup Junkie Foundation. She consults with small business owners and entrepreneurs in the region regarding all aspects of starting a business or growing their current businesses and maintaining economic viability. Martha has worked as a business banker, business attorney, Walton College Small Business Center consultant, um, a public school educator, and formerly served as the chairperson of the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce Small Business Council. She is also the Capital Access Manager for the NWA Kiva Hub, providing guidance for entrepreneurs to gain access to crowdfunded loans for historically and economically disadvantaged small business owners via the Kia.com kiva.org platform. Um, Martha's here to talk about the Kiva microloan program. And also today we are going to be giving away some business books that we have purchased as a giveaway. So for those of you who are in attendance, stay at the end and maybe you'll win the drawing. So I'll hand it over to you, Martha. Thanks. Well, Philip, it's looking good for you for a book, so <laughs> stay with us. <laughs> Hi. Yes, I'm Martha Lonigan. I'm, I'm coming to you uh, today from my home in Fayetteville. Um, Startup Junkie Foundation, actually, our offices are on the square in Fayetteville, and we're on the east side in that big, giant red brick building um, that some people actually don't know is owned by the University of Arkansas. And so we're on the second floor. If you stand in front of the Pryor Center and look up, you'll actually see our logos on the windows, but I'm working from home today. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen and I'm gonna start out uh, showing you our Startup Junkie website. So y'all wave at me if it's wrong. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself. You know, we are so polite in the South. People, they, they feel like they're interrupting. And I'm like, this is a workshop. You're supposed to talk and ask questions. So just holler and say, Martha, we don't see that. Or whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you repeat that? It's not interrupting. It's talking. So that's what we're here to do. So everybody feel free to do that. <clears throat> so um, I show you this is our website. So this is where you can always go here and learn about us. You can go to our team. It shows everyone who works on our team and it has a contact where you can use Calendly to book a Zoom meeting with us or email us. So that's there for you. I come here. This is where you can always find our Kiva Northwest Arkansas website. This is a listing of our other programs we do. So Startup Junkie Foundation has been around for almost four years now. It is funded by the Walton Family Foundation to provide free services to area entrepreneurs in Northwest Arkansas. Startup Junkie Consulting LLC was started by Jeff Amarine and his son Brett back in about 2010, 2011, when he was a professor at the Walton College and began growing the side business consulting uh, business. They saw a great need to provide quality business consulting services to entrepreneurs in Northwest Arkansas, but, you know, there were only two people and they had a business to run. And so they approached the Walton Family Foundation and got this grant. And so we're on year three of that grant and that funds the foundation to hire people like me with a banking business owner background. My husband and I have owned a small business for 16 years I am a sixth generation Northwest Arkansas small business owner. Every kind of business in my family you can imagine. We also have Taylor Hasley, our director, who is a finance guru. We have uh, Morgan Schultz, who is an HR uh, background uh, certified and been an HR director. She also ran a main street in Siloam Springs. And we have Caleb Talley, who is a journalist and our marketing manager. And then I also have, you'll see on our Kiva site, an associate Alvin Singh, who is a marketing professional to help us with Kiva. So we have the fuel accelerator program that we also operate, which is under another grant from the Arkansas Economic Development Commission to attract tech talent to Northwest Arkansas. The Science Venture Studio is another Walton Family Foundation uh, grant funded program. Katie Thompson is also on our staff and she works with uh, enterprise ready, uh, innovative products, tech, uh, medical devices. She helps people doing research and developing those products 
to get uh, government funding through grant programs like the SBIR as TTR programs through NASA and the US uh, Department of Agriculture, et cetera. And here is our program, which is Kiva Northwest Arkansas. So this is our local uh, website that we have. If it will come up, there we go. And so you, we're actually, because the name is so weird, you can type Kiva, K-I-V-A, N-W-A into Google, and it's like the third listing. So it's such a weird name. We have instant, easy SEO. So you can always find it, but it's K-I-V-A-N-W-A.org. And here it's got a description of the program. You can contact me. This is my other email. I have two email addresses. I have one with Startup Junkie and then I have one with Kiva or you can click here and that links to set a meeting with me. Then this is Alvin Singh. He's our other program associate, works with Kiva. One of Alvin's main jobs is he promotes the Kiva program for us. He helps me with Kiva presentations um, and he takes the picture, which is really important for our Kiva borrowers. Uh, Kiva is very particular about the photo that is used for the promotional photo. A fun thing you can do is also go down here to the bottom and you can watch our video. And this video uh, has Mayor Jordan from Fayetteville in it. It has representatives from many of the Northwest Arkansas Chambers of Commerce. And it has video interviews with some of our borrowers and it, they tell their stories. And so that's a great video that you can watch there. This is a fun spot here too. When you click on see our Kiva success stories, it takes you to the national, see how it goes here to KIVA.org. And this is a link to show you all of the Northwest Arkansas loans that have been fully funded since we launched the program last December. Today, I just realized it a little while ago, in fact, today is actually the one year anniversary of our hub. So we had our press conference um, exactly a year ago today, right about now, in fact, um, we had the TV and the radio, KUAF came and covered it and we launched the hub. So all of these loans have been done in the last year. We have, I think we may wind up, uh, Kiva closes December 17th for three weeks. And I'm hoping by next, um, by December 17th, we'll have 30 fully funded loans. Um, we, we've uh, finished 26 for sure, uh, or 27 for sure, and I've got three in the pipeline. So we'll just see. I think we may round the year out with 30, which is pretty busy for a brand new Kiva Hub. Uh, Kiva's goal is for each hub to have at least 10 a year. So you can see here all different types of businesses. Sally has a float therapy and hair salon spa. Uh, Dale has a credit RX business. She helps people repair their credit in Northwest Arkansas. Damar is pretty famous. If you've never heard of Rock and Baker in Uptown uh, Fayetteville, um, you, you probably aren't active on social media or don't watch the news. <laughs> so Damara has a wonderful bread location there and she employs uh, people with uh, special needs to work in her bread store, especially a lot of people on the autism spectrum. So wonderful business. So just all different types. Kelvin is our, our latest um, actual fully funded Kiva loan. He has a fabulous barbecue uh, mobile restaurant out on Martin Luther King Boulevard um, in South Fayetteville, but just right before you get to the Farmington city limits, it's in front of a, a place uh, called Club Red. When I was growing up, it was called The Rink. So um, he's in the parking lot there and has fabulous food. So you can see we have all different types. Um, we have Stephanie has a medical practice in um, Siloam Springs. It's the first uh, cash uh, membership uh, medical practice in uh, in Siloam Springs. And so as you can see, we just have a wide variety. I'm getting ready to show you in a second the international Kiva website. So this is our local Kiva site. It's taken us there. Martin, and he pronounces it Martin. Martin is in Springdale and he has a startup a supplement company. And Mike has invented, with the help of the engineering and science department at John Brown University in Siloam, an at-home uh, fitness machine. And both Mike and Martine um, just went live today on Kiva.org. So when I go here to Kiva, this is, you can see just Kiva.org. So this is the international site for Kiva. Kiva loan programs are available in over 80 countries in the US. 
And the way you can see all those places is you hover over this lend and you begin to see, you could just search for, if you only wanted to loan to women, if you only wanted to loan to people that had an education need, if you only wanted to donate to mission-driven organizations, you could choose a category. You see here in the regions, if you go to North America and United States, there are currently 51 Kiva loans out there looking for loans. The difference between the international program and the US is the international program has partners in many different countries and they have different standards and goals. So you might see someone in Ecuador or in Kenya fundraising a loan to put a roof on their house, to purchase dentures. You won't see that for Kiva US. When Kiva US came here in 2011, it was only, it was agreed that the program would only be for small business development. I'm going to show you a presentation in a minute that gives you a little bit more background on Kiva, but it was started in 2005 by a missionary couple from San Francisco. That becomes real important in a minute. And they were doing mission work in different countries in Africa, and they found out about a bank called Grauman Bank. And I highly recommend if you're interested in the power of micro lending to uplift and empower um, impoverished people, there's a book called Banker to the Poor. And the gentleman that wrote that book, um, he won the Nobel Peace Prize back in the 1980s. And he set up these Grauman banks, which are micro lenders. And when I mean micro, they started out with like 20 and $30 loans. And it enabled women in villages in India and Pakistan and Bangladesh to purchase goods to make baskets and furniture and clothing. This couple from San Francisco was visiting some Grauman banks, heard about Grauman banks and said, this should go online. We could put this online like GoFundMe, but if our mission is to empower impoverished people and minorities and women, we can make it a nonprofit so fees don't have to be charged. So that's how Kiva was born in 05, came to the US in 2011, and they said in the United States, we have free public education. We have a lot of free health sources or accessible health sources. So in the US, the loans are only for business. So when you go to the Kiva US site, you will see here, these are all people in the United States. They are all just for businesses, all right? And so I haven't actually been on here since Mike and Martine went live. There's Martine. So right here, there's Martine in Springdale, Arkansas, right alongside someone from Philadelphia and someone from New York. And when you go and click on their profile, you'll see here, it has the name of his business. It tells the town. There is a personal story that's told, and he has an extensive background in this area. You get to know the person. It tells about the business, how old it is, what its um, products are, what its services are, and what's the purpose of the loan. You also see over here that the Startup Junkie Foundation has endorsed Martine. So remember, we're now on the Kiva International side. So I want to convince people in Australia and Ireland and Canada and Mississippi and North Dakota that Martine is a good risk for this loan. And so if someone decided they wanted to lend to Martine, they would click on this lend now. They would proceed to checkout. And if they are signed in, you would have to, if you started doing this here, it would, it would encourage you to sign in or create an account. So you would then have to create an account at Kiva and link your PayPal to Kiva to make the loan. Now, PayPal is important. PayPal is based in San Francisco. And the PayPal people and the Kiva people knew each other. And Kiva, like I said, is a nonprofit. Um, I did a post a few weeks ago, the Gates Family Foundation donates to Kiva. Obviously, the Walton Family Foundation, which gave us the grant to start getting me trained to help people with this. The Walton Family Foundation um, matches all the loans that are made to Martine or to Mike on the site. They have sent money to Kiva in California, and there's a match. 
And that's because Kiva itself is a nonprofit and it gets donations from wealthy foundations um, and companies. The Hitachi Corporation this summer donated a million dollars to Kiva. That pays for the staff, that pays for this website, that pays for them to train people like me to help people with Kiva loans. Now, GoFundMe, Kickstarter, those are for-profit companies. Those companies spent millions of dollars building those platforms. So if you go set up a GoFundMe page, you could for a business, or if it's for your neighbor whose um, who's, uh, husband died and they don't have enough money for a funeral. Every time someone goes on GoFundMe and donates them $10 or $100, there's a 30% fee. I mean, a, a 30 cent fee. Every donation has a 30 cent fee. If you use your credit card or debit card, there's going to be a 7 to 10% fee as well, okay? Kiva has 0% interest and no fees because donations to its nonprofit mission pay for all that. So you'll see here when someone goes to Lend, 25 is the minimum. You can click on this and go up as much as you want, but also here they always ask for a donation to Kiva. They already, they automatically generate it at um, 15%, but you can always go right here and change that to zero. You don't have to donate to Kiva. You can just have it there as um, just the loan to the individual. So um, I'm gonna exit out of this now and go back to the Kiva site. And then that will expire. I'm not gonna sign in. Um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and take that out. Um, there we go. Cause I don't want Martine looking and thinking he's got another loan coming. <laughs> so if I wanted to, I could sign in. I have a personal account. I personally loan to people on Kiva. So I could have signed in. I already have my PayPal link to my bank account and I could have made a loan to Martine. Kiva takes my loan. Martine has to get to 100% of his goal. Now, if I loaned 25 to him just now, the Walton Family Foundation loan fund would have matched it. Kiva holds that money in Martine's account at Kiva in its computer system in San Francisco. When he hits 100%, he has 45 days to hit 100%. Then Kiva transfers all those loans from the Walton Family Foundation and then from anyone around the world who has loaned to him. They transfer that into his account then they transfer it to PayPal and PayPal transfers it to him and he puts it in his bank account. Then in six months, it's deferred six months right now, Martine will send a payment every month to Kiva. Kiva will take 75% of that payment and pay back the Walton Family Foundation because that's how high the match is right now due to COVID. And then they'll take the other 25%. And if I loaned him $25, 36 month term, I would get 69 cents a month put in my Kiva account. And I can go on my Kiva account every month and see how many people have been paying me back, how much is in there. I can ask Kiva at any time to transfer that back to me via my PayPal, or I can reloan it to someone else. So it's like you build a little credit account at Kiva with your PayPal. And once again, you have to use PayPal because PayPal donates its use for free to Kiva. Kiva saves around 2.7 million a year in processing fees because the PayPal use is for free. So that's why it has to be PayPal because they get to use it for free and it helps them meet their mission. All right, so that's kind of where you go to lend. This borrow tab is where I take borrowers to start an application. And so they would click here to start their application I guide them through that. What I typically do <clears throat> is people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm interested in a Kiva loan. And I talk to them first about the fact that their profile is going to have to be public. Are you comfortable with that? And you saw it's just their story. It's not their finances. I then talk to them about the financial info we need, which is very, very basic. It's not, you don't have to have profit and loss statements. We don't have to have tax returns. It's very basic information to make sure that in six months, the business could afford that payment. What are your plans? Why do you think your business is going to come back from COVID and how can you make these payments? Um, unlike when I was a banker, if you told me your credit score was below 680, 
I would start helping you by sending you maybe to a micro lender in Huntsville called Forge or one in Fayetteville called Communities Unlimited, or I would start talking to you about getting your credit score up. There, I couldn't even take an application if your credit score was below 680. Kiva does not care what your credit score is. Obviously, you're going to get probably approved for a higher loan, like 15,000, which is the max, if you have an 800 credit score. But I have had several Kiva borrowers with 400 credit scores still get approved for a smaller loan, usually around under $5,000. So Kiva gives everyone that potential. Kiva's target is to serve women, minorities, people with felony records, as long as it is not a violent crime or a theft or fraud crime, veterans, and people of very low economic status. So its mission is to change lives and to empower people who have been denied access to credit. And sometimes my borrowers laugh because I'll say, have you ever been turned down for a bank loan? Have you checked with some banks? And they're like, yeah, I got turned down twice. And I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> That's actually some boxes to check. That will help you get approved for a Kiva loan because they have a mission. You know, if, if you haven't been denied access to credit, if you have an 800 credit score, you can get a loan at a bank or an area SBA micro lender. You don't need Kiva. And so I'm not going to, you know, I tell people I get paid to help. I will help anyone. But I'm, I'm going to tell you if, if you haven't been disadvantaged, I don't think you need Kiva to empower you. So there's a chance you might not get approved if you don't meet Kiva's mission. I mean, it's just the same concept of if I started a nonprofit to assist people with breast cancer and you came and asked for a gas card or assistance and you don't have breast cancer, that doesn't meet my nonprofit's mission. So I might send you to Spark in Bentonville, right? They help people who are struggling economically, but that wouldn't meet the mission of my breast cancer um, nonprofit. So that's the same concept with Kiva. So that's what we're doing is looking to empower people um, who have been disadvantaged in the capital realm. So I just wanted to show you this to show you where we like to eventually um, get everybody. Now I'm going to stop my share and switch over to my regular PowerPoint and just go through some of the basics, some of the deal breakers that will um, that would that I would go over with people to say you really shouldn't apply for a Kiva loan. I just know you're not going to qualify. It also gives you some ideas of the steps that I go through with people. But I got to stop my screen for a second to switch over to my PowerPoint. All right. All right, so you can see this is the uh, Kiva logo and then there are uh, over 30 now uh, Kiva hubs. And what that means is some local foundation, a chamber of commerce, a city, an SBA women's business center, some entity has said, we want Kiva in our community and we want somebody to help them. So one of those entities has sent money to Kiva, a donation to Kiva, Kiva has trained a person like me, and they're here to help. Kiva, the word, is a Swahili word. And interestingly enough, it is also a Native American word, a Pueblo Indian word in the United States. Kiva in Swahili means community help. And Kiva, um, this is what I've, I've researched on Google, Kiva, Kiva in the Pueblo language stands for a hut where the town meets. So it's the concept of community. And so with these Kiva loans, one of the first things I tell people is they're going to have to get 5, 10, 15, 20, or 30 people in the community once they're approved by Kiva to first loan them 25 each. The amount of private local loans depends on how much. If they're only approved for three to 5,000, they may, may only have to get five or 10. I had someone this um, summer that was approved for 15,000 and had to get 30 community loans. This shows Kiva that the community supports your business and wants you uh, to be valued. 
They have to do that because somebody in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota could apply for a Kiva loan and they have to have some validation from the community. Even though I'm also entering a uh, referral, a uh, endorsement for them, they still have to have that. The beauty is Kiva takes no liens on collateral. So if I have a person um, back in February who did a Kiva loan, she has a food truck, Kinley Soul Food Kitchen, which is out at Lake Fayetteville, and she needed a delivery vehicle for her food truck. That was part of what her funding was. So, so she could make deliveries for catering, and then actually COVID hit, and that was very helpful to her. There is no lien on that vehicle from Kiva. Okay, if she had gotten that loan from a bank, which she was unable to get because her food truck is very new, they would have instantly put a lien on it and they have to. That's like a federal and an FDIC regulation. They're going to have bank examiners that require that. So that's that's a great thing. So one of the main slogans you'll see on this screen for Kiva is that these are loans that change lives. I can tell you in the year that I've been doing this, I have seen these loans change people's lives. People have been able to take advantage of opportunities that without this five, 10 or $15,000, they never could have taken care of, taken advantage of that opportunity. And I'll show you an example of one of those um, in a minute. Dreams are universal, opportunity is not. And that's what Kiva wants to do. It wants to provide opportunity to people who have no way to get the funds to get a business started or to buy equipment or to grow their business and start their dreams. As I told you, Kiva was established in 2005. It's the world's first personal micro lending website. These are not donations. The lenders are going to be paid back via their PayPal. Uh, Kiva has been ranked uh, also in the past couple of years as one of the top 10 most respected nonprofits. Sophia Vergara, who is the highest paid actress in the world, Kiva is her personal favorite nonprofit. Um, there, if you go to our Facebook page for Kiva Northwest Arkansas or Kiva.org, you'll see where I did a share of hers. She was on the Jimmy Fallon show this summer promoting Kiva. She's a huge Kiva supporter. Uh, this shows you some of the global impact of Kiva International. Over 3.7 million people have borrowed from Kiva since 2005. Um, notice the repayment rate of 95%. And here is the US um, map. It shows you all the places in the US that Kiva US since 2011 has taken place. Um, notice the dots you'll see on the map here. Here's Arkansas, which there were some Kiva loans being made even before we opened the hub because anybody can go on Kiva. And notice there were a whole bunch around Tulsa because they had a Kiva hub for three years. The Lobeck Taylor Foundation in Tulsa supported that. But after COVID, um, they had to close that hub because the foundation transferred um, some of its funds to support the small businesses that opened with the Kiva loans. Um, they're all housed in the uh, Mother Road Market on Route 66 in Tulsa, and they wanted to make sure they stayed open instead of funding new ones. But great news is come January, there's going to be a new Kiva hub in Oklahoma City. So we will have a, a new one um, close to us. Uh, the problem is the missing microloan on the left. Traditional lenders want to make bigger loans. They don't want to make $5,000 loans, and they're sure not going to make $5,000 loans without collateral. And that doesn't mean our banks are heartless. I was a small business banker. I'm telling you, we're good people. Um, they can't. They have so many rules and regulations on them about requirements for collateral, requirements and risk. They get examined by bank examiners, federal bank examiners, state bank examiners. They have to have good credit risk ratings. And so they can't make those loans. Um, about 30% of my Kiva borrowers this year have been referred to me by bankers who absolutely adored these people but could not make them loans. Uh, Kiva loans are great because they don't require audited business financials. I talk to people, we, we see some basic things. You have to have a business bank account. Kiva doesn't look to see how much is in it, but they want to see that you're operating in a, in a business manner. Uh, also, the Kiva loans, once again, are 0% interest, no fees. So that's very helpful to our borrowers. The loans range in size from 1,000 to 15,000. Um, used to Kiva loans only went up to 10,000. They raised it to 15 in April when COVID hit. 
and the repayments are 12 to 36 months, but always 0% interest. Remember the donations that wealthy benefactors and corporations make to Kiva cover all the operating expenses. Um, when I first launched this hub, I had some people say, well, boy, you used to be a banker. Are you trying to compete with the banks? And I had a couple of banker friends call me and say, hey, what are you doing? You competing with us doing these loans. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, I've got a Kiva borrower right now who has a 404 credit score, absolutely no collateral, filed bankruptcy three years ago and needs $10,000 to buy a delivery vehicle for a food truck. Can I send her to you? And they're like, oh, no. Okay, yes, go help her. <laughs> they can't make those kind of loans. But my hope is we're helping them up the capital ladder. They're going to be able to show a micro lender like Forge in Huntsville or Communities Unlimited in Fayetteville. In three years, I had a Kiva business loan. I made every payment on time. Um, I went to Credit Counseling of Arkansas. Miss Martha sent me there and I've, I've improved my credit. I've gone from a 602 to a 704. Could I maybe get a larger loan now? And, and my food truck is paid for. I can pledge it as collateral because there's no Kiva lien on it. So that's our goal is to build them. My goal is for all my Kiva borrowers to eventually go to a local Northwest Arkansas community bank and get a bigger loan to grow their business. So we're not competing, we're supporting our local banks. Uh, trustees, I told you about that earlier. Startup Junkie Foundation is a trustee. Um, we actually have a new Kiva trustee in central and southern Arkansas, uh, LISC Rule. Now, they're not going to provide uh, capital access managers or a CAM hub, but people can go to LISC um, through um, the conductor, which is also another team with Startup Junkie. It's, it's our team in central Arkansas at University of Central Arkansas. They will interview them and talk to them, and then LISC will trustee endorse them. And that helps Kiva um, be more comfortable and have validation for its risk analysis that the, the person has a real business and they're operational and they're someone that their lenders can trust. So this shows the picture. I kind of call it like the Lion King effect, right? And, 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 and if you watch our video, Mayor Jordan says, we're all in this together. And I just love that man. And, and that's what Kiva shows. We're all in this together. So small community organizations like Startup Junkie Foundation, uh, Chambers of Commerce, city economic development companies um, can offer business assistance to people. And then local individuals, uh, philanthropists like the Walton Family Foundation can provide match funds. People in the community down here can become Kiva lenders. If you have a PayPal and 25 bucks, you can be the 10th of 10 private loans to launch someone to get their $5,000 loan. You can make a big difference for someone with your $25. And then the borrowers can meet the local lenders. You, we, we don't use last names, but you're going to see where their business is. You, I've had some of my Kiva borrowers um, tell me, they'll text me or message me and say, one of my lenders came in the store today and had waffles and I got to meet them and it was so neat. And so a lot of what we provide also, Startup Junkie, we have 23,000 social media followers in Northwest Arkansas. So when people are, are, are raising a Kiva loan, we promote them. And I've had many borrowers say, I got a bunch of new customers, people who found out about me. And then our banks and our cities are thrilled with this because it provides economic development to those that um, are disadvantaged. So I already kind of told you a little bit about this, the difference um, between typical crowdfunders and Kiva. Note, Kiva is a nonprofit. There's no charge. They're, they're, they're just out to meet a mission. Whereas Kickstarter and GoFundMe, they, they do need to charge fees because they built this multi-million dollar platform. And it's a great thing. It helps a lot of people. There's just going to be fees and costs associated with it. Also, um, as I was telling you before, uh, with Kiva, there are deferments of the payments. Um, these are donations, but um, a lot of times people don't meet their goals uh, with those. The success rate is actually only an average of 20% if you look at all the crowdfunding sites. And Kiva, typically because of CAM support and Kiva support, so even if someone doesn't have a CAM manager, they have uh, an email address and, and uh, a way to contact Kiva to get help, so they're more successful. Uh, so these are the basics. These are what I call the deal breakers. You got to be 18. 
Um, that's important. People say, well, of course, a teenager can't start a business. Um, the Startup Junkie Foundation hosted the Shark Tank tryouts, the TV show Shark Tank, two years ago in Bentonville. We had over 200 people try out and one made it. She went on Shark Tank in January of last year and she got funded and she was 14 years old. So that was Sophie Overton. She invented a sock that you can put your cell phone in and still play soccer and sports in. And so her parents had assisted her. So let me tell you, we have some youth entrepreneurs in Northwest Arkansas. Um, the business loan must be for business purposes and that can't be to pay yourself. Now you can pay contractors, you can pay your other employees, but you can't get a Kiva loan just because your income's down and you need to pay yourself. That's not allowed, but you can buy equipment, you can buy inventory, you can pay for a website update, you can buy a delivery vehicle, any of those things can be done. Has to be in the US. You can't currently be in bankruptcy or foreclosure. It is fine if, you're, if you filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy three years ago, it's closed, over with, and you've moved on. But you can't be in an open 13. You can't have just recently been filed uh, foreclosure papers. The problem is we don't know the future. If a Chapter 13 hasn't finished for some reason and you do something wrong, the judge could close it, and then you have to pay all those debts again. Uh, in the foreclosure, we don't know if the bank's just going to take the house, sell it, and then be done with you or if there's going to be a further judgment. So all of those are fine. They just have to be closed cases. Another thing that I've had a couple people not like is that they have to be willing, they have to have a Facebook and Instagram or a website or a Twitter. They have to be promoting their business. Even if they're a sole proprietor, we need you to be promoting your business so you can help loan raise and also Kiva research shows that small businesses that have social media platforms are more successful. So those are things that are required. I've had some people come to me and they've been operating their business out of their garage or their back bedroom for years and have just never had any social media. And so I've helped them set up a Facebook page. I've helped them set up an Instagram and they've said, I should have done this years ago. And it's helped grow their business. And then it helped them get approved for the Kiva loan also. And one person, we actually got the Kiva loan to help them hire someone. There's a lady in Fayetteville that has a marketing company that will teach people how to do Instagram and Facebook. And then she was also going to help her set up a website. So we got the basic one set up that qualified for Kiva. And then she was going to use part of her loan, one, part of it to buy equipment and part of it to hire this lady to teach her better how to have a website and how to have Instagram. And that's all perfectly allowable under Kiva. You have to have a PayPal account. You can't get the funds unless you have a PayPal. And Kiva doesn't care if it's linked to your personal bank account, but you have to have a PayPal. Uh, once again, I already talked about the, the, the crimes uh, part. You also have to be the owner so you, you can't be the manager of a store and like your owner's too busy and doesn't really care and just tells you to do it. It has to be the owner or the sole proprietor who's maybe just operating as a DBA. Um, you have to work with me to give me some basic financial information and discussion about your business to make sure this isn't just a pipe dream. This isn't just something you're going to give a try to, that you really have a business plan. I'm not going to make you create a formal business plan like I did when I was a banker, but we're, we're going to talk about this and make sure that we understand, you know, okay, if you buy this piece of equipment and make this new line of cookies or this new line of cakes, how much are you going to sell them for? How much do you need to sell them for? You're going to have this payment. Are you sure you can make enough cookies and cakes instead of just bread like you used to, to pay for this piece of equipment? So we have to have a plan in place. Um, you have to be willing for uh, to communicate with me on a regular basis, text, email, telephone. You have to communicate with me because sometimes when we're in the phases of the loan process, it moves pretty quickly and Kiva needs responses. Um, there is the Walton Family Foundation Match Fund. If your home address or your business address is in Washington or Benton County and you're approved by Kiva in California for the loan, all loans made to you will be fully matched, be it 25 bucks or 100 bucks, it'll be fully matched. Basic documents. Um, I have a borrower and she's on her site um, and she's also my friend. Her name is Kate and she does alterations out of her home. And uh, she goes to people's houses, 
picks up their clothes. She used to do alterations for the famous, famous town and country women's store that used to be on the square in Fayetteville. And Kate needed a new sewing machine. And she had been doing that for years and she doesn't have an LLC. There, there's no liability. People obviously under city law can't come to her house. She's not operating a business out of her house. She just goes and picks up materials and takes them home and works on them. It's like a workshop. So her basic thing we needed to do for Kiva is she went to the Washington County Courthouse. She paid $25 and got a doing business as certificate, which all business owners should do that. If you're doing stuff in your house and generating income, the county actually has a right to know that you're doing that. And everybody should do it, but a lot of people don't. So she went and got her certificate. She took that certificate and her driver's license and went to the bank and opened a, it's still a personal business account, but it says doing business as Kate McCoy Art Studio, because she also does painting and murals. All right. And so those two pieces of paper, that was all we needed to do her very simple Kiva application for $3,000 to get a sewing machine. That's all it's needed. Now, if you have already formed an LLC or if you're a food business, I, I'm not in good conscience going to let you sell food to people from a food truck and not have an LLC form. First of all, I don't think you'll be able to get insurance, but it's too risky. And so if you have an LLC or you have a high risk business like food or products that go in people or on their skin, you need to have an LLC to protect your liability. So we'll need the articles of incorporation filed with the Secretary of State. We need an operating agreement, which tells where the business is located, who has authority to take out loans and open bank accounts. We'll have to get a federal tax ID number, a separate number from the IRS, not your social security number, like for a DBA, but a separate tax ID number. All that goes to the bank and we get a, a business bank account. Then we're going to need to see that you have a city business license and some sort of permit from the state to operate the food business and a sales tax permit. So you've got to, if, you know, if you're going to have that higher level riskier business, we're going to have to have more documents, but just the basics. You don't have to make me profit loss statements and balance sheets and I don't have to have tax returns like a bank would absolutely require. So those are some of the basics. These are the, the businesses that cannot apply for Kiva loans. Kiva business is the concept of consumer facing. I make a product, I sell it to you, you pay me. I do a service. I come to your house. I clean your house. You pay me. Direct consumer. So if I'm a real estate agent, I don't get a check at a closing. I get a check later from the real estate corporation, the broker, right? If I sell Avon, you might give me money, but it's made out to Avon. I don't keep that money. I get paid from Avon. Uber, same thing. So it can't be a business that is actually controlled by a major corporation. It has to be direct consumer facing. Also, Kiva loans are not allowed for highly regulated businesses. So CBD dealers, drone operators, uh, marijuana dispensaries, um, anything of, uh, related to uh, sexual entertainment, all that stuff is highly, highly local, county, state, federally regulated. Kiva's not messing with it because a city council could pass a law tomorrow that says we've had three drones run into houses in our city in the last month. No more drones in the city of Fayetteville. We're outlawing them. There went your business, right? They could, the, the state of Arkansas could pass a law in a few, few weeks that says no more CBD marijuana dispensaries in the whole state. So anything heavily government regulated, no, no uh, Kiva loan. Um, I think that pretty much covers all of those. Also, nothing related to tobacco. Once again, heavily government regulated. So the process is people contact me. I send them a little to-do list, write some paragraphs, gather this financial information. I set up an appointment with Alvin to come out and take their picture. And as you saw in the pictures, they're very specific. It has to be horizontal. It has to show the owner or the sole proprietor smiling looking at the camera, and it has to give us an instant idea of what kind of business you have. So we get that ready. And then uh, we, for a while, I was having to help them all online. Once they start the application, they would get on the phone and I would guide them through the website. 
And then after they get to about page five, it populates to the national site and I can see their application if they're in Washington, Benton, Carroll or Madison County. And so I was guiding them. Now um, our building, you're allowed to come in our building. We have giant rooms in our office and we can sit at the opposite ends of tables and wear face masks and I will watch people. They'll turn their laptop around and I'll watch them go through the process. Typically, I try to do that. Um, and once they get going, then I've had some people who don't have a scanner. So they bring me their business documents. I scan them and email them to them as PDFs and they upload them. And then they hit submit. It comes to me, I review it and endorse it, and then I send it to Kiva for this part, the Kiva review. It says one to three weeks, but it, because of my trustee endorsement, they know my applications are probably complete, so they kind of bump them up. It typically just takes us a week to get an offer. Then they tell them how many. I had a lady this morning get approved for $5,000. She has to first get five friends, family, or customers to loan her 25 each. As soon as that happens, she has 14 days, but she'll get it done in two days. As soon as that happens, she goes to the national site and she'll get 75% of that from the Walton Family Foundation. They will transfer those funds to her within five days of her getting all the loans. And then in six months, she will start repaying her Kiva account with her PayPal then Kiva takes her payment and distributes it out to everyone for her. And then the great thing is she also has an account and she can send updates. She can go type a message and Kiva sends that message out to everyone from Ireland and London and New York and Gentry, Arkansas, who loaned to her. And she can send messages and keep people updated about her business. And so these are some of the basics that show you the different levels, how much, and, and the fundraising depends upon the need. Kiva, you know, like I said, Kiva is one of the few places that you'll get approved maybe for more loan funds if you've been turned down for a loan because that's their mission. So that, that's helpful uh, that you've been turned down for a loan. Um, it's helpful that you are a, a minority classification that our U.S. history shows has been specifically denied access to capital because of the color of your skin. Those are the people that Kiva wants to help. Those are the people that Bill and Melinda Gates, that's the reason they give money. They want to help black people. They want to help women. They want to help people with incarceration records to live a better life and gain access to capital and the American dream. So once again, I've kind of gone over this already. It's kind of a repetitive slide, but just once again, the, the big thing is the collateral. You're never going to get a loan at a bank at no collateral not going to happen, not since 2009. You have to pledge collateral. If I did any business loans over $100,000 um, when I was at Legacy National Bank as a loan officer under the national SBA guidelines, we would ask for a second mortgage on your house. I don't care if there's a little bit of equity or a lot, you're going to have to put a second mortgage on your house if the loan's over $100,000. That's SBA guidelines. That's required. And so banks can't get around that. And so the Kiva loans are a lot uh, more flexible on that because a lot of times our borrowers don't have any collateral to pledge. All right, so uh, we're gonna create, here's an example for you of a Kiva picture. And you can see this woman, she's in her store, her shop. You can see this gentleman, he obviously by his picture probably owns or runs a coffee shop. So it's just kind of that snapshot of telling us what the people do. Kiva loans can be for buying equipment, paying employees, upgrading a space. You can get a Kiva loan to upgrade a space that you don't even own. If you want to repaint, remodel, add new tables, that's fine, even if you rent the space. Uh, great example here. This shows you, once again, I showed you earlier what these loans look like when they're live. So this gentleman needed 20 private loans from his community. This is what his link looks like to his friends and family. So this is like you're his Aunt Sally and he sent you this and you can see he's got 18 of 20. He needs two more. And so Aunt Sally and her husband, Uncle Joe, loan this gentleman, uh, Ralston. They loan him 25 each and boom, now it looks like this, 37% of 100. And so then that goes live on the international site. Um, I had a Kiva borrower last week who had three loans from Australia. We have no idea. Somebody, I asked him, I said, do you know anybody in Australia? He goes, I don't know. He goes, I don't even know where Australia is. But for some reason, his story piqued the interest of some people in Australia. And um, he had three, he's from Fayetteville and he had three loans from Australia. 
And then it shows fully funded. And that's when then Kiva transfers all the loans made to you through people's Kiva accounts to PayPal. PayPal transfers it to Ralston's PayPal. And then he puts it in his bank account. And then this is a, a slide shows you the chart, what our Kiva borrowers can print off for the future to show uh, a micro lenders or a bank how they've made their payment each month on time and how much that payment was. And that's all just done through their PayPal and their bank account. They can set up automatic payment withdrawals if they like, or they can go in each month and make the payment manually. So that's kind of the process. Um, there, you know, I tell people it's not hard. There's just a lot of pieces to it. And that's my job is to guide people through it. And, and I'm, I'm sitting a lot better now than I was a year ago from right now. I, I know what the process is. Um, I know how to do it more efficiently. Um, it's it's a, a wonderful uh, blessing to me. Um, I can tell you these loans um, truly do save lives, uh, save lives, improve lives. We don't save lives. They do that at Washington Regional. I'm not a nurse. They really do change people's lives because when you can go from having always had a boss and worked for someone else to just for a few thousand dollars to open your own business and have a future and a legacy, it can really change not only the life of the business owner, but their family, their community. You know, when your neighbors see you start a business and they've always thought about starting a business, then that inspires them too. And at Startup Junkie, our mission and our true belief is that entrepreneurship improves lives and communities. And so we are big proponents of anything we can do to help people start um, entre entrepreneurial um, journeys to open businesses and to, you know, even if it's a side business and they still have a regular job, that's in fact the way the majority of my business owners start. So. All right, that is the end of the formal presentation. And so if anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself. Um, and you can always, like I said, go to our site and send me an email or book an appointment with me to talk more about Kiva. Martha, that was a great presentation. Thank you so much. For Thank doing you, this. Philip, for attending. Okay, so you need to wait and see if you win one of those books, okay? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I had to say, Philip, you have one. Oh, um, yay! yay. Oh. Um, yeah, I have about four or five different books that Martha actually suggests to small business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, they're really great ones, but if you just come by the library and you can pick them up at curbside pickup, just okay. call and tell them that you're there and they'll bring them out to you. Oh, great. Thanks yeah. so much. Do you have a business, Philip, or are you thinking about starting one or are you interested in being a lender? Uh, I'm a lender. Uh, so, our, oh, great. Yes. Um, when you send people to Forge in Huntsville, that's uh, me and my team. Um, I took over Forge in March. Uh, I think well, the day schools shut down. Oh, oh great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, I, I've worked with, let me see, who are the people? Car Carson, is Carson still at Forge? She's not, but no, I know okay, her. So I yeah. Yeah. Carson, and then I'm so embarrassed. What was the wonderful gentleman, that, Charlie? Charlie Stockton, yeah. He yeah. was the uh, director for many, many years here. Yeah. Um, oh, well, lots I, of growth. So. I'm so glad we connected, Philip. Yeah, you all, you all are on a referral list. I send a lot of folks to you when I don't feel like they're a good fit for Kiba, but have a good potential for you. Yeah. And then, um, well, thank you for attending. I'm so glad I should have asked you earlier, but sometimes people are funny if you ask them too many questions when they first come on, you know, you put them on the spot. So <laughs> I just like to be accommodating. So, <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, uh, reach out anytime, uh, Philip. And obviously when, when, when folks are just not a good fit for you all yet, if the thousand to 15,000, um, is a potential for them, just any, feel free to send anyone to talk to me. Thank you very much. I think we, we have, I'm glad to see the last year of um, that you've gotten so many this last year. I think that's great. And yeah. I, I'm with you, Martha, in terms of um, anybody thinking there's competition, I think it, it doesn't recognize the actual need that's out there and yeah. the different layers of capital that's needed at every step of the way, so. Yeah. Welcome. Our, our local bankers have been wonderfully supportive and they're thrilled because, you know, any good banker hates to say no. 
They like right. to say, not us now, but try this. And so that's, that's why I really want to get the word out to the bankers. We're here to help you keep that good face and to keep that good community spirit. Um, and, and I tell people all the time, I have this year when they've been complaining about the PPP process, I'm like, listen, you need to show your bankers some grace. This PPP thing was a new llama. None of us had ever seen that before. And those bankers don't know any more about it than you do because SBA just tells the public. I mean, you could you could have found out about PPP loans on Google as fast as your banker did. So, you know, yeah, that's what I mean. We all just got to show each other some grace and get this figured out. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, those will be some great books for your team then, Philip. Yay. That's awesome. That's good. Great. That's super. All right. Well, thank you, Corey. Yeah, thank you so much, Martha. And Kelly, I don't think we've met, have we? It's nice to meet you, Kelly. We have not, and I had to leave the meeting twice. I'm so so sorry. I had other stuff going on already. Oh, that's and fine. So that's... Oh, wait. Okay, hang on. I, guess. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Um, but I heard I heard most of it, and I had to hide myself. There's stuff going on in here and here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, Corey um, will tell you, I'm a huge Fayetteville Public Library fan. I. I physically grew up in the Dixon Street Library as a child. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm, cool. I'm just a monster supporter, love everything about FPL. So anything we can ever do or I can do to support you all, just let me know. Thank you. We will definitely call you again. Yeah. Kathy and I will, absolutely. Everybody Thank have a so good much. weekend. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Martha. Bye, guys. Bye.